What causes decay underneath fillings? Here is a lower first and second molar that has decay in between the teeth and a questionable spot underneath the fillings. As we look at the actual exam, you can see a hole in the filling where the patient has ground down the tooth and on the second molar, and then you can see some erosion where the enamel actually is worn away on the cusp tips of the uh, uh, first and second molar. Uh, as we get closer, you can see the wear that's occurred and possible chipping of the tooth. So there's multiple problems that has caused this particular restoration to fail. The uh, first molar also <coughs> has that erosion, as you just saw in that picture. And we go ahead and remove the tooth colored filling. And as we start to do that, you'll notice the dark brown that's there and uh, the softer decay that shows. Now you have to ask yourself, well, was this all just from grinding? Uh, and it's possible that the filling had loosened up, but you have to also think that possibly the bonding of the material might not have worked. Um, <clears> that's <throat> very difficult sometimes. Uh, these fillings are actually four years old according to the patient. Uh, he's a new patient to my office and if you went back and looked at the x-rays you could see possibly the decay up underneath or it could have been a liner. That's one of the problems with tooth colored fillings. The reason we did go ahead and do it was is this interproximal decay that's uh, very obvious with the white uh, filling uh, uh, there, that, that filling, but uh, decalcification that uh, goes in between the teeth. And if you notice, it is a broad approach all the way there. And then the adjacent tooth also has uh, decay. And in a few minutes, uh, I will start removing that in a very conservative way. Here I am. And <clears throat> because I have access to the side of the tooth, <clears throat> I can go ahead and just remove that portion of it. As we get closer, you'll notice that under behind the white area that there's a little bit of brown uh, decay where the um, bacteria had penetrated. And this particular drill that I'm using is called a 330. Uh, it's a very small head. And uh, now we're going to switch to a round burr that uh, um, is able to remove some of the composite that's still there and to remove the obvious decay. You will see uh, with the a little bit later how the decay is actually up underneath the cusp tip and we use a spoon to show that the decay is still there. It's very soft. Uh, we're able to peel it out. And teeth are supposed to be hard, not soft. And <clears throat> so we have quite a little bit more work to do. And uh, it's possible that uh, the filling uh, may have had some decay left behind originally. That would be another alternative. Uh, it's possible that the light didn't cure properly. Uh, so you have three or four, actually about four or five different reasons. Uh, one is, is the patient's bite loosened up the filling. Two is that the bonding didn't work out uh, the way it should, uh, either from the manufacturer defect or possibly the light not uh, uh, curing it in the proper direction. Uh, the fourth might be that uh, there was some decay inadvertently left behind by the previous dentist. Um, there's just a lot of <clears throat> different possibilities. Uh, contamination from the saliva. We need to be able to keep it nice and dry uh, for the bonding. Now here I am uh, putting in some decay detector. And uh, uh, I'll usually do that once just to kind of get a, an idea if I'm uh, missing anything. 
<clears throat> as it gets deeper, um, the decay detector isn't quite as effective. But you can see the uh, lots of uh, green uh, indicator on the second molar and how deep that is. And uh, uh, not quite so much on the first molar, but it's still there. And so we'll go ahead and remove uh, that those areas and then open up the tooth particularly on that second molar so that the light can penetrate up underneath the cusp. I'm not an advocate of silver fillings uh, but if you were able to get all the decay out um, you wouldn't need to necessarily uh, remove all the undercuts um, with a silver filling. On the other hand, with a tooth colored filling, you definitely need that to happen uh, unless you're using some sort of self cure composite. And here we are opening that up a little bit, and we still have a significant amount of decay there. And <clears throat> the whole idea is to remove it all. And you're just getting the highlights of this particular two fillings. Uh, it certainly took longer than 10 minutes to get this all cleaned up. And you can also see in this view the uh, cavity preparation on the mesial. And now we're switching over to the first molar, making sure everything's taken care of. Notice how I'm using a mirror to see uh, into the tooth and drilling at the same time. <clears throat> so it's not direct vision. And sometimes people, uh, dentists, will remove the decay only from the one view and not use a mirror. And uh, that makes it uh, more difficult to get all the decay out. And there's still some decay, so we go ahead and remove that. And this is relatively deep. We're going to put some sort of base down, which is a liner to uh, uh, help the nerve uh, not be quite as stimulated and uh, uh, to make it more comfortable so that the tooth doesn't lose vitality. There's a little piece of cord that's packed between the teeth and that's so that we can get isolation. We can see a little bit of the white uh, area that was still there. I went back and removed it. Here I'm putting the base in and that's for the second molar. Here it goes for the first and we'll light cure that to make that nice and hard. Now there are folks that uh, really like to say, okay, use a rubber dam in a situation like that. And I found that with a microscope in my particular hands that uh, over 30 years, I haven't had problems with leakage where I've had to go back and redo things. Here I am polishing the interproximal area with a soft flex disc and just to make sure everything's nice and polished. If you notice, it's not bleeding after that. And that's because of the cord that was there and I was able to make it really you know, quite nice. Just a little bit of oozing there uh, after that, and uh, um, but not significant enough uh, uh, once we put a band around the adjacent tooth. And you'll see that I think in just a second. So that filling is done on the second molar. We'll go ahead, there's the band. Notice that now there's no blood in that area. Everything's cleaned up. Put the filling in and the fillings are uh, then subsequently polished. I like using polishing discs after I've got the occlusion right. I think that uh, a smoother filling lasts longer and you don't get as much plaque on them. And so the, uh, there are the two fillings.